Okay, this is the 2018 GL2 map. As ever, we're going to interpret um, features that we can see on the map in order that we can determine the order in which we're going to draw the cross section. Okay, looking at this map, um, one of the first things that I can spot is that we have an unconformity. We can see this from the change in dip amount and dip direction, and it is at the base of rock unit B. So if we look at um, this area of the map here, we can see that we've got a layer which is horizontal, then direct below it, we've got boundaries which have been truncated by it. And the layers below this particular boundary have got a steeper angle and then change in dip direction. So I'm going to mark on the unconformity. It's at the base of rock unit B. And you can see that this unconformity continues all the way across the map. It gets stopped by this feature here and it continues to the north. The same boundary can be seen on this side of the map. I'm going to mark that in as well. Okay, so the unconformity is being marked in. Um, what other features uh, can we see? Well, there's also a pluton on the map, as well as another igneous body. But the pluton is in the bottom right hand corner. It is rock unit C. It's a large uh, amorphous shape, a bit sort of blobby like, and it's got an associated contact metamorphic aureole. It's discordant to bedding, so this is the pluton. And across here, we've got a sheet like body that's discordant to loads of boundaries. And in fact, it is the youngest feature on the map because it cuts across the unconformity, the layer above it, uh, the underlying structures and all uh, the different faults which are on the map as well. Unlike the igneous body down here, the pluton, this is definitely uh, younger than the country rock, but it is older than the um, unconformity because it sits underneath it. It's been truncated by the unconformity um, in this area of the map. Okay, um, what else can we see? Well, we've got a major um, fault, F1. It's got a north-south strike. It's a straight line on the map, which will suggest that F1 is vertical. Um, what else can we tell? Well, if we look at the unconformity, it's been given two spot heights. The one on the left hand side to the uh, west of the fault is at 400 metres. And on the right side of the fault, um, sorry, on the left side, oh, there was right, <laughs> on the right side of the fault to the east of the fault is at 300 metres. So that would indicate that the same boundary has been displaced. So F1 is younger than the unconformity and it's displaced it. Um, this side of the fault has been downthrown, this side of the fault has been upthrown. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some notation on for my, uh, a little bit later. These little cross marks indicate that this side has gone down and this side has moved up relative to the other side. Okay, um, the other things that we should be able to find on these sorts of maps are folds. And yeah, we can see them. We're getting some layers over this side of the fault, um, this side of the map, which uh, are repeated. So the easiest ones to pick out first is rock unit A. This is repeated, but rock unit F in the centre isn't. The dips are in opposite directions. So we've got a fault, sorry, a fold down the middle. And this fold is an antiform. If we look at this layer again, rock unit A, it's repeated on this side. This layer is also repeated. This layer is not because it's been truncated by um, the sort of the default. Okay, so this layer is not repeated. We've got two dip arrows pointing this direction. So our APT must be in here. Two dip arrows moving towards each other. So we've got a sim form on this part of the map okay so i think we've interpreted it 
Okay, I've transferred lots of the information from the geological map onto my strip of paper. Um, the next stage after this is going to start to sketch our cross section. But before we can do that, I need to work out the order in which I'm going to actually uh, draw it. Okay, I'm going to write it down on a strip of paper to make sure that I know um, what I'm going to do. I'm going to start off with the youngest event and work my way back in time. Okay, so we're drawing cross section from X to Y. I don't need to worry about the youngest feature up here or even F2 because they don't appear on my cross section. I'm just going to concentrate on this strip going across the centre part of the map. Okay, looking at it, and um, one of the first features that I know that um, from outcrop pattern that looks the youngest is the unconformity. But I've got to remember um, that I've got two spot heights and the unconformity occurs at two different heights on either side of the fault. This means that F1 is younger than the unconformity. So I'm going to start off, I'm going to put F1 in first, and I know that is vertical. Then I'm going to put in the unconformity and the layer above the unconformity, which is rock unit B. Once I've done that, the next youngest feature is the pluton because it cuts across layer um, D and um, H, which uh, sort of is the country rock. So I'm going to do the pluton next. OK, and then I'm going to do the folded layers, which is part of the country rock. So I've got my order in which I'm going to do my cross section. The other thing which I'm going to have to do a little bit later on, there's some parts of the structure which have been hidden away from the unconformity. So I'm going to have to um, project where I think these boundaries are a little bit later. And I'll do that and I'll um, add it onto the strip of paper when I, as and when I need it. OK, so here's the land surface, which we're going to sketch the cross section on. Um, so we're going to line up A and B, um, X and uh, Y. Straight away, I know that F1 has got to be on first. We know it's vertical and it corresponds really nicely to this small topographic low, which makes sense, really, because if you've got a fault there, it's going to brecciate the rock and make it easier to erode. I know it's vertical. And I know it's the youngest feature on the cross section, so I'm going to take it all the way past the top land surface and mark that on. Remember to always to put the notation for what that particular boundary is. So there's F1. Next one, I'm going to put the unconformity. You'll notice I've marked on the heights of the unconformity, so that's going to help me to make sure I'm getting the, the right um, areas. So... There's the unconformity, it corresponds to that bit, and the unconformity over here is there. So it should be 300 on this side, and look, the boundaries match. I know it's horizontal, and it gets stopped by the fault. It is layer B, so let's put that note down. On this side, that does correspond to 400 metres as well, so I know that it's accurate. Across that is layer B as well. Okay, and also we know from the map that this side's down thrown, and I've got that. So I'm going to put the half arrows on to show which side of the fault's moved down. Okay, next thing on our list is uh, the pluton. It occurs on um, um, the east side of the map. Light up again. Boundaries there corresponds to the change, so maybe the pluton is harder rock compared to the country rock. I'm going to mark on the metamorphic aureole as well. That's got to have the same dip and um, width along the from the boundary. So there's my pluton. I'm going to mark on um, metamorphic aureole. The pluton is rock unit C. Okay, so what we're going to do now is the fold structures. Going quickly back to the map, I'm going to put these um, boundaries in first because I know that they're there. Then I'm going to work out what happens below the unconformity before going back to this side of the map. There's more knowns on here compared to on this side. 
So we'll start off with the antifall. Those two boundaries are at 40 degrees towards the east. Those two are 40 degrees towards the west. This is D, this is A, this is F and A and back to D again. Top tip is to make sure you don't extend the lines too far down until you know where things are going to meet. So when a D gets stopped by the fault, it's going to come up and it's going to eventually come back down again over here. That's 40 degrees there as well. Again, it's going to get stopped by the fault. This side, uh, I'm moving um, this way, so it's in the opposite direction. I've crossed over the fold axis, four degrees. I'm not going to take it too far down because I don't know how far um, it will come before it goes back up again. I know that and that boundary is the same because it's F and A boundary. So I can join those two together. Oh, perfect. 40 degrees um, towards the west. Again, I'm not taking it too far down because I don't know how far it is until it's going to come back up again. So I'm going to take this one back up to the surface. There we go. So we've got the start of the structure. Now, that's all I can do based on these boundaries here. I need to transfer the information from underneath the unconformity to the strip of paper. So I'm going to project where I think these are going to um, occur by marking little blue lines on my map to transfer them onto here. So this is rock unit E. F and A. All those are dipping six degrees that way. Line them up on here. I'm going to hit the base, the unconformity. We'll go six degrees that way. So this is rock unit A, this is F, and that's E. So this is going to join up with this line here. Very good. So we've actually got the thickness of F, we've got the thickness of A. They should maintain the same thickness around. So this boundary is going to join up with that one. There we go. And F is going to maintain its thickness all the way around. And E is going to outcrop down here. Quick way you can do it. If you measure the distance, it's 1.5 centimetres there. Slightly off around there. 1.5 here, 1.5 there. Can join those lines up. Same on this bit. This is rock unit E down here, rock unit E around, F, A, um, I can put in the fold axes, so there's my anti-fold, 
because it's in form with an inclined axis, an upright one. Evidence that from the map is we've got a, a steeper dip on this limb, a, a shallower dip on this limb. So that would suggest that the fold axis would have to be inclined. On our upright one, they've got the same angles on either side, the fault. So we've got this bit, the cross section to do. We know there's one uh, boundary at the surface, which is here which goes, oh, sorry, wrong position, 40 degrees that way. And that is the DH boundary. This is rock unit H and we know D is directly below it. Now, we've got to work out where the AD boundary is here and the AF boundary. We know that the EF boundary is there, so this one's been displaced down on this side, and it should be about 100 metres difference, which is a little bit um, out, but it's not too bad. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I know the thickness of F is 1.5 centimetres. It's so gonna maintain the dip on that side of the fault. So there's the top of F. I'm going to put in the top of A and again, that's 1.5 centimetres thick. That's the true thickness of the layer. So there's A. We don't know how thick D is. This side of the fault tells us that it should be about three centimetres thick or 300 metres based on the scale. But this side we can't tell because it's been eroded away by the unconformity. So, put the um, displacement. So we finished.